for the binomial distribution with n trials and probability of success p, we want to consider the case where we have many, many trials and then the probability of success for each trial becomes very, very small. In particular, we're interested in the constraint np is equal to some constant lambda, and then that would mean p is equal to the constant lambda divided by n. So we want to consider the case where n tends towards infinity, so we have many, many trials, and then this becomes very, very small, so we have a very low probability of success. We want to show that under this constraint, as the number of trials grows towards infinity, the probability mass function will just tend towards the probability mass function for the Poisson distribution. So we can show this by first of all considering the expression for the probability mass function and then see what happens as n tends towards infinity. So for p, let's write this as lambda divided by n to the power of k and then 1 minus lambda divided by n to the power of n minus k. And then for n c k, we can also rewrite this as n factorial divided by k factorial divided by n minus k factorial. So let's do a bit of rearranging. Let's pull out the terms lambda to the power of k, and then this k factorial. These terms are unaffected by n. And then we also have a 1 over n to the power of k. And then for the factorial terms, we have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way to n minus k minus 1. So you can see here we have k terms for the n factorial. And then for the remaining terms, so we have n minus k, n minus k plus 1, and so on, all of the remaining terms will be uh, will be offset by the this n minus k factorial in the denominator. So they will all cancel each other out. So we're left with only these terms in the numerator. And so first of all, we have considered these terms. We considered the factorials. We considered the n to the power of k. And then for this term here, we have 1 minus lambda divided by n to the power of n. And so let's also separate out the k term, so to the power of negative k. So this is what we have so far. Now let's do a little bit more rearranging. You'll notice that we have k terms here in the numerator. And then this n to the power of k, this is just n multiplied by itself k times. So we also have k terms. We have k number of n's in the denominator. So each one of these n's will be matched with one of these uh, product terms in the numerator. And so in effect, what we have is n divided by n, which is 1, n minus 1 divided by n, which is 1 minus 1 over n. So this goes on and on, all the way to 1 minus k minus 1 divided by n. And then here we have the 1 minus lambda divided by n to the power of negative k, and then 1 minus negative lambda divided by n to the power of n. Now what happens when n tends towards infinity? So when n tends towards infinity, you will see that each one of these terms here, this term here, they will all tend towards 0. So they will all tend towards 0. And then notice that here we actually we have k number of terms. So we have a finite number of terms where each one of them will tend towards 1. So the overall product will also tend towards 1. So in, uh, so in the end, we have 1 over here for all these terms. And if the same goes for this term. 1 minus lambda over n, this term just tends towards uh, 0 as n tends towards infinity. So we have k number of terms that all tend towards 1, so the entire product will also tend towards 1, so we have 1. And then this term here, this will just become e to the power of negative lambda. And the reason why that is, we can go to another slide for this. So first of all, note that the limit as n towards infinity for 1 plus 1 over n to the power of n is equal to e. And so there is a heuristic argument we can make if instead of 1 we have a constant over here. So in our case the constant is negative lambda. So instead of 1 we have negative lambda. So how do we evaluate this limit? So if we have negative lambda we can also supply a negative lambda here for the denominator and then cancel it back out by adding a outer power here for this entire expression. So these two will actually just cancel out. So in effect, we have the same thing. But if we consider the term inside the bracket, we know that this entire term will just tend towards e, uh, towards the constant e, because it doesn't matter if we added a constant over here. So overall, this whole term, you can imagine it tends towards the same infinity because they have this same constant over here. So it doesn't matter if we have a constant as long as they tend towards infinity at the same rate, which they do because these two expressions are entirely the same, this entire thing will tend towards e. So in the end, we have e to the power of negative lambda. So this is a heuristic argument for how we can evaluate a 
such a limit for this expression here. This is not very rigorous, but this is a heuristic argument that I hopefully I think is intuitive. So in the end, we have this expression here, which we get once n turns towards infinity. So with a bit of cleaning up, we have e to the power of negative lambda, lambda to the power of k divided by k factorial. And this is the probability mass function of the Poisson distribution.